Hello, my internet friends. Long time no chat, huh? I hope you're all doing exceedingly okay-ish, at the very least. Not a lot of videos going on, not for lack of trying, but it's summertime. The kids this year not running around as wild and free as last season because situation. However, they did shove off to their grandparents for the weekend. Wife and I finally have some alone time. Can't tell you how long it's been. And have we ever been taking advantage of that? Like we just spent all morning playing the best game of... <sighs> so that's where she hit it. E-M-T. This thing amazing or what? I mean, just look at that. Sitting there like no big deal. I keep pushing it same exact way every single time and I keep getting a different result. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. It reminds me of that old quote I've long come to hate. You know the one about doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results? But this thing somehow changes every time I push it. And I've been doing this for about five continuous hours now. So I ask you, who's the insane one here? Me or this obvious work of the devil? If there's one thing that history has taught us, if you don't understand something, your best recourse is to destroy it. You know what it'd be fun to talk about? You'll never guess what'll be fun to talk about. Go on, guess. I'll give you three ge latching mechanisms. All sorts of latching mechanisms, specifically two. And as if going on and on and waving my hands in the air weren't enough, we'll build our own. A bit simplified, sure, but hopefully it goes a long way to helping you make heads or tails of the more complicated ones. And you know, maybe add a little know-how to your cerebral toolbox. Maybe one day you'll want to add one to one of your projects. You already know latching mechanisms from such popular films as The Amazing Retractable Pens. Just like the other latches, push once to get your point across, push again to just never mind forget I even brought it up. I think it's safe to say everybody loves these things. I know that because the manufacturers go to a lot of trouble to keep the mechanism visible. And just like everything else, there are a few variants of this latch because patents probably. This one has a cylindrical cam inside that just gets bumped around and round every time someone or something pushes the button. This part that I'm making has absolutely nothing to do with this video, but what kind of relationship would you and I have if we started keeping secrets? I'm not going to get into these if you're interested, and I don't know how you couldn't be. Engineer Guy did a really cool video on the cylindrical cam latch. Nice 3D graphics and a great walkthrough. Even if, in my opinion, the drunk dancing cone variant is way cooler. What is that thing even doing in there? I tried my best to deburr this. It's tricky getting in these tight spaces with my angle grinder. <laughs> but I think that's working pretty all right. I'm trying to get you in here as close as possible. You may have to adjust the depth of field on your TV. It's me, old Tony from the future. You can tell because I'm wearing a different shirt. I realized too late I never demonstrated how these latches are used. Took it for granted, I suppose. And you know what they say about taking things for granted. You make a G out of R and I've traveled back in time to before the vivisection to right that wrong. Though, since I'm doing this now, there'll be no reason for future me, well, past future me, to go back in time to fix. I've got two latches here. Both do the same exact thing, but in their own special way. Again, these are meant for things like 
kitchen cabinets or drawers maybe. The latch bit is fixed, maybe inside the cabinet, and this little hook thing would be on the door. So perhaps when you swung the door closed, push the latch, it would catch and the door won't open unless you push the door again. This little angry beetle looking thing does the same, except this interfaces with like a ball catch. Close the cabinet door or the drawer or what have you, the ball is captured. It won't separate. Push it again and it releases. Okay, fine, the angry beetle is pretty neat, but this thing takes advantage of some of the weirder geometries you can get out of injection molded plastic. This one is more clockworky, and I think easier to demonstrate how the concept works. So that's why I'm taking this one apart and not that one. Anyway, let's get back to whatever it was I was. This thing has two moving pieces. The one we see from the outside, what I'm calling the latch, the bit you move. It's kind of this pie-shaped 90 degree wedge thing with a pin in the top. Both parts are spring-loaded. The latch has its spring tucked under here around the pin that it's rotating on. You can see just the leg of it there. And then there's this sort of paw thing, what I'm calling the paw for now. It too is spring loaded. Maybe you can make the spring out back here. The spring keeps this biased forward towards the latch. The latch part also has this little foot on it, that little tab sticking up. That's really important. That's really the only part that interfaces with the paw. So the key to these push-push mechanisms, the part that you push, the actuator, in this case the latch I guess, takes one path on the forward stroke, so it takes one path when you push it, and then a second path when you push it again, a different path on the return stroke. Since most people can't magically change the shape of the actuator, something needs to happen in the clockwork. Something inside changes on the actuator's return trip. Now what I just said might make more sense in the simpler version of this that we'll build, but maybe you'll see it happen here if you're looking for it. On the push stroke, that little tab we saw on the actuator, there it is. I can't see what you're seeing, I'm behind this cutout section. That little foot rides on the outside of the paw until it falls into this hook recess. That's the first click. When I let this go, the springs push everything together, which is the second click. So the latch is now stuck there. I can't pull this latch back open. It's now putting this whole paw in compression up against its pin. The only way to open this is to destroy the entire mechanism. But now watch what happens when I push it again. Watch how the paw releases the latch. When I push it in, it gets past that little step, falls deeper into the hook. And you see that little diving board type tab on the paw? When I let this go, the paw will lift and the actuator slips underneath it. Let's do that again. Push the paw out of the way. It snaps into that hook shape and it's latched. Push it again. That's the third click. And I now have access to that little ramp feature, which picks up the paw like it isn't even there. Effectively, that creates two different paths for the actuator to take. One on the forward path, and a different one on the return. Pretty cool, huh? Since we're now latch design experts, and the world is our push-push oyster, let's build our own. Perhaps a simpler version. Based entirely on the one I already built, we'll need to start with two parts that move relative to each other. Some things we can latch together. Let's do two circles. No, 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 no. Two squares. That'll save me some time. We need one to track with the other, so maybe two posts the blocks can ride on. Perfect. And to keep these separated, let's throw in a couple of springs. This will give us some mechanism, whatever mechanism, to build the push-push latch into. Let's get started with the blocks.
And here we go. There are the two blocks, the moving block and the fixed block. I've Loctited in just some precision rounds. Hopefully those just slip together and there we have it, our relative motion. Next, I just wanna build a couple of springs that keep these two blocks apart. What's really weird though, are these two counter bores, this slot and that threaded hole, which I haven't done yet, so I have no idea how they got there. But those two counterboard holes are just to give my spring some body length when it's fully compressed. I want this thing to look closed or closed-ish when we push it shut. And compression springs that have zero body length haven't been invented yet, so I can't show you those. Again, just some place for the springs to go. Let's head over to the lathe. This is the spring you just saw me make, and unfortunately it failed miserably. I had a hunch that would happen. I don't have the wire size I needed and just crossed my fingers and used a bigger one. I've made two others using lighter gauged wire, and these work better. I wanted stronger springs just because it would make this whole thing clickier, but these will have to do. You see how this first one with the bigger wire is about a half inch shorter? Well, it started out the same length. This is the length of spring I need, but on the first squeeze, it took a set. Taking a set means you exceeded the wire strength and it permanently deformed. This spring took a set and technically failed. So these just ride on the posts. Perfect. Now let's move on to the geometry that creates the push-push latch. This thing that looks like a poorly engraved letter P for you taxonomists out there is a cam path or maybe cam follower path, I'm not sure. Do I look like I work for H&R Block or something? In this context, I guess in a latch, it's sometimes called a cartoid path, heart-shaped path, maybe a raceway. Call it whatever you want, but this particular specimen looks terrible. Unfortunately, it had a bad run-in with a CNC router. Okay, here's what's what. This cam path worked just fine. That was my justification for keeping it. But in editing, under high magnification, it was just eating me up alive inside. So I made another one. This one ain't winning any prizes either, but looks a little cleaner than the last one. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. I realize I'm just springing this on you. You're likely wondering how on earth we got here. Allow me to just walk you through how this works. Is it okay if we hold hands while I do this? Stay with me now. We just need one more piece, which is just a simple wire. Or is it? This wire acts like the paw we saw in the commercial latch. Let me put this thing in a vise. I just want to keep it steady while we... All right, so hopefully this is less squirrely. So the wire we said is like the paw in the commercial latch. And the first thing it does is keeps the two parts from separating. The track ends there so the block can't fly off the guides. This first straight section of track is really like the extents of motion of the whole mechanism. I mean, in this case, the spring bottoms out before that wire actually reaches the top, but you could use that to set, I guess, the limit of motion. Now, although that's pretty freaking exciting as is, it's not really doing much, again, other than keeping my parts from flying apart. In order for the rest of this track to do its magic, we just need a bit of spring force in that wire to push it over to the right, in this case, or towards me, into the track. We want the tip of that wire to follow this track. I'm just gonna loosen the spring. I don't know, place it about here. Now it's got a bit of a spring force. If I drop it in the track, not only is it holding the parts together, but the tip of that wire is pushing towards me, sprung loaded towards me. Watch what happens now. Mm 
the wire shifted, fell into sort of that center portion of the heart, and the mechanism can't open. If I push it again, watch how it tracks. This curved portion of the heart, the curved portion of the track, bends my wire spring back. I'll just shut up now and let you watch that. Notice that the last leg of this track is 3D, for lack of a better description. The groove isn't cut all into the same plane. There's a small step there. So when I push it on the actuation stroke, the wire can't get up there. It's forced to follow the straight section of the track. When I come around, it can drop off and fall back down. That happened kind of fast. Maybe I can... It still happened fast. Maybe you get the idea. Now, if that ain't cooler than me and you put together, I don't know what is. At first blush, and stop blushing, it's making me uncomfortable, you might not recognize these as the same mechanism. And maybe they're not. I mean, what do I know? But hopefully it's clear the stages are the same, and how this more two-dimensional version is just kind of a flattened out version of this. Or rather, this more complicated looking one is just a folded version of one of these. And here, it's just rolled up into a circle. The flat one, of course, takes up more space and is used a lot where manufacturers can get that track geometry almost for free instead of having to add additional parts like in this cabinet latch. This flat one is used a lot in plastic stuff, for example, where they're molding the part anyway, like a pop-out tray or a cup holder or something. They can just mold that track into a part they're going to be making anyway. If you have one of those sunglass drop-down trays in your car, something like this, Depending on what type you have, you can maybe see the heart-shaped track on the side. Your car is likely full of these things, but the glasses tray is probably the easiest place to see this mechanism in the wild. And fun fact, these things are usually damped, too. If you look in this picture, the other side has molded-in gear teeth. That more than likely interfaces with a small rotary damper. And don't even get me started on rotary dampers. The damper slows the motion down, giving the tray or whatever a more premium feel, versus it just snapping open like a mousetrap. Though, frankly, for all I know, that could be a damper and push-push all in one. What a time to be alive. Speaking of cars, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor. The broken ashtray in my wife's car. Maybe not an ashtray anymore? What do you call these things now? change tray. This thing broke a year or two ago. My wife's been asking me to sort it out ever since. I'm sure there's a heart-shaped track in there somewhere. Maybe the spring broke, the pin fell out of the track, who knows what. Knowing her, there's probably an empty can of Sprite and a shoe stuck back there. And now that we know how these things work, we can fix them. Unfortunately, in this particular situation, it'd take me eight hours just to get through the center console and the dashboard to even get a look at the spring and track inside. So it's staying broken. Let's head back into the garage. It's like 400 degrees in this car. No, I could probably go on about this stuff forever, but I'm afraid I might have already said too much. I hope you like that. Thanks for watching.